this clip courtesy of Two Ages to Try about Matt Rive trying to cancel himself. I'm assuming, I haven't watched this yet, but I'm assuming this video that Two Ages to Try put together is somewhere tied with this article that I saw about Matt Rife getting a lot of blowback because of some domestic violence joke in his special. And then obviously with this article too that says um, <laughs> he responded to all the backlash with the Instagram story about, oh, here's my apology or something, click here. And when you click here for his apology, it went to some special needs helmets, right? Which were fucking, it, I thought it was quite a funny little joke to be fair. But I was also wondering when I saw this stuff, like, what's he doing? Is he purposely trying to get cancelled? And then, then I randomly, I stumbled on YouTube and obviously I saw Two Years to Try already made a video about it. So we're going to watch this and see what he's had to say. But it is a weird approach to marketing your special, but it does make some kind of sense, isn't it? If you think about what Brendan was trying to do in the run-up to Gringo Pappy, you look at some, you know, some of the stuff all these guys are doing anyway in general when they talk about it, especially another one is Whitney Cummings. Whitney Cummings loves to talk about, she loves to fucking pontificate about cancel culture, but never says anything worth cancelling. But I think comedians have realised cancel culture is actually a good promotional tool. So they're now very purposely trying to get themselves cancelled. They're trying to say dicey things so that they can get into the news cycle. But a lot of them don't really have any interesting things to say, you know? They don't have anything that really, um, what you would call counselable to actually say. So they're having to play these weird fucking games or do what Andrew Schultz did. You remember Andrew Schultz? When he just flat out lied and said that club wouldn't book him or something because of some joke he had to take out. Like, just some bullshit. You make up this entire narrative just to fucking sell your special, which is really pathetic, to be fair. But anyway, let's go to to, his, to try and see what he has to say about this. Come on, let's roll, let's roll. Yeah, exactly, Stinger. Exactly, Stinger. Exactly. Let's go. Oh, some mute for some in, in his new. All right, so it looks like some people are upset with Matt Rife for a joke he made in his new comedy special. So they're trying to cancel him for being sexist. But I think this backlash that Matt's getting is probably what he's hoping for because he opened the special with this joke. And, you know, his audience is like 95% women, and he's also popular with the TikTok crowd. So he had to know something like this was going to happen. I've only been to Baltimore one time. I ate lunch there, and the hostess who, like, seats you at the restaurant had a black eye. <laughs> a full black eye. And it wasn't like, what happened? It was pretty obvious what happened. And we couldn't get over the fact that we're like, this is the face of the company? Like, this is... This is who you have greeting people? And my boy who I was with was like, yeah, I feel bad for her, man. I feel like they should you know, put her in the kitchen or something where nobody, <laughs> where nobody has to see her face, you know? And I was like, yeah, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. So... <laughs> and you know, I never really liked Matt Rife. I never thought he was funny, but... Come on, bro. Is that the joke they're trying to cancel him for? It's the most fucking safe domestic violence joke i've heard in a while that could have got real dark that was a quite a safe punchline really i didn't really think it was that crazy don't get me wrong of course if you are fucking a domestic violence survivor you're, you're not going to take well to anybody joking on your shit but to the regular person and to what comedians could actually do that wasn't really that racy or dicey really was it come on I feel like that joke isn't that bad. Maybe it's just because I'm a misogynist and my hatred towards women outweighs my hatred towards Matt Reif. No, but even though the joke wasn't that bad, of course there's still going to be backlash from it. Anybody could have told you that. So I think Matt definitely saw this coming. And like I said, I think he's trying to ruffle some feathers mm -hmm. with this. Because first of all, canceling a comedian for a joke never really does anything. You know, if these people really want to... Why can't comedians just focus on being funny instead of getting cancelled for fucking clout? I mean... Being will always judge you with jokes any way you could at least be funny. That's the thing, Robert Henry Poet. I think what <clears throat> a lot of people are saying this, and I think I'm getting around to it. When I first started the stream, I remember being, or when I started first stream, streaming these things, I remember being very optimistic about the scene and stuff, right? And very kind of um, doughy eyed and stuff, right? About what was going on. I went to see loads of shows, all this sort of shit. Over time of like watching a lot of comedy specials and obviously going to a few shows here and there, but not as many as I'd want to go to. And obviously a lot of the experience that you guys have been speaking about in the chat about your experiences. I think we've all come to the conclusion, most of us, I think so. 
most of these comedians aren't funny. There's a small minority of them that are, and we all would pay tickets to go see them, right? My favorite, who's he's kind of hacky, but I think he's fucking hilarious, is Sebastian Manasako. Like, I'll pay a ticket to go see him anytime. I'm seeing Fluffy actually. No, I, Fluffy? Is it Fluffy you've seen already? Yeah, I want to see Fluffy. There's there's certain people who I would like to see and pay money for, but the vast, vast majority of stand-up comedians aren't funny. The ones who are kind of funny, you have to enjoy them in location. If you don't see them in a comedy club, it's very difficult to find them funny watching a comedy special on your laptop in bed while you're fucking eating some Pringles. It's not going to work. You have to kind of be in the environment with a couple of drinks, with your friends, maybe a couple of bumps to you. Then you might find that shit funny. So that's why these guys have to do all these tricks because they're not really that funny. You know, they have to do something to grab your attention, to get you talking about it or to make you even tune in. So this is what the situation we've got. That's why they don't focus on jokes because I think they all know fundamentally they're not really that funny in the grand scheme of things. You get to these comedians, just stop talking about them. Stop trying to cancel them because most of the time when they do try to cancel them, it only helps. Like at this point, if a comedian makes an offensive joke where you could tell they're trying to... Also, I'm gonna be con no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna push back on this. I don't think the Shane Gillis cancelling helped him. It didn't help him at all. It actually was worse. Do you remember when he actually got cancelled from SNL? People actually distanced themselves from him a little bit. He had to kind of do his own thing. And obviously it was funny, but it didn't help him. No one in like mainstream media was trying to book him off the back of that fucking um episode where he said that Chinese slur or, or that Asian slur or something. It didn't actually work that way. He actually overcame counterculture because it's actually funny. And he just focused on putting out good podcast. That was it. Oh <laughs> this thing a good get 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 fucked. Get fucked. <laughs> Zinger's favorite comedian is Malik. <laughs> I was laughing at his fucking trailer like he was fucking Dave Chappelle, innit? I was like, ah, black guy making jokes ah, he's one of us <laughs> it only helps like at this point if a comedian makes an offensive joke where you could tell they're trying to offend some people and they don't get cancelled that's way more embarrassing so if Matt didn't get backlash for his special he definitely would have been disappointed like you could tell this is the reaction he wanted especially because he doubled down and he posted this fake apology that of course upset people even more but on the other hand a lot of people thought this was hilarious and I'm sure he gained some new fans from this and even if he lost more fans than he gained I'm sure he's happy with that because he didn't want those fans to begin with like i think that's mostly what he's doing here he's trying to filter out fans that don't understand comedy so he posted this to instagram he said if you've ever been offended by a joke i've told here's a link to my official apology and the link says tap to solve your issue and then you click on it and it takes you to a website that sells special needs helmets for literal dents that's funny though come on that's funny that is funny. So, of course, comedy fans and people that are just anti-political correctness and anti-cancel culture love this. And that's the thing. Most people do not care and they think this is hilarious. I'm just curious to know. I'm going to leave it there. But I'm just curious to know who told him to do that strategy. It's an interesting pivot, isn't it? He comes into stand-up comedy having an incredible fan base of mostly women and young people which is quite rare in comedy clubs i'd imagine to have like a lot of young people and women to be into at the same time um he, he's not exactly safe anyway he's comedy he does talk about di dicey topics he does have some controversial well, not controversial but he does have some you know some opinions that maybe people from the left would maybe wouldn't like and some views and stuff and then to suddenly sort of like go the opposite way i wonder why he did that do you think that's tom segura's influence or is that just him deep down thinking he doesn't really like his fans he doesn't like the fact that when he goes out on stage and he looks out to the audience he sees all those women he wants it to be a bit more mixed he doesn't like that maybe he the, the audience leans a particular way he wants to mix up a little bit it takes a lot of bravery you know what do you think i think it takes a lot of bravery to be where he's at and to purposely try and piss off the fans that you've just cultivated. It's not been long since he's been super famous, especially stand-up-wise, right? He's only blown up probably, what, in the last two years, probably? So to, like, go out of your way to piss them off, to kind of shake the tree, figuratively speaking, it takes some balls. 
I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't do it. I don't think it makes any sense, really. Um, but, you know, creatively, maybe career-wise, he's decided he wants to go in another direction. Maybe he doesn't want to be um, seen as a Disney stand-up looking comedian type of person. Maybe he wants to be a legit stand-up comedian. So he's doing all his like, he's doing all his risque stuff early on his career while he can take chances. And then however the chips may fall later on in his future, he, the chips may fall. That might be a thing. So let's see. I'm curious to see why he did that to be fair. Um, Robert Henry Poet said, I hear you about the fact that it's in the jokes and not controversy eventually raise his profile then it isn't better to actually be funny sound yeah of course look we we know what the we know what the actual solution is Shane Gillis has shown us even you know the guys on Adam Freeland show right um and Nick Mullen and stuff all those guys even Stavros like we know what the actual way to do things correctly is just being funny but I think a lot of these guys as well as being not funny I think similar to Burt at least Burt is honest I think a lot of them also want to be famous you know I think that's also a part of their motivation. So if your motivation is to be famous and to sell tickets and have loads of money, you don't really need to be funny to do that, you know? You could just do what you're doing, you know, have some fucking TikToks or some videos go viral because you roasted somebody in a crowd and whatever you do, say something hacky and then there, you know what I mean? You're off to the races. But it doesn't really benefit your long-term career and stuff but they don't really care about that they just want to be rich and famous and stuff which is honest, again i'm not slighting that everyone's got their goals but it's just interesting to view from the outside in because a lot of these guys love to talk a big game about comedy and doing bits and going on the road and crafting jokes but really most of them just want to sell lots of tickets and be famous really they don't really care about being funny. Not not many of them, I don't think so. And the ones that do, you can tell because their podcasts are just not, you know, every minute they're just fucking razzing each other, you know, zingers going all over the place, do you know what I mean? Dissing each other, roasting each other, they love it. But most of these guys don't really. They just want to have money. They want to live a comfortable life. They want to fly in private jets and shit. And that's about it. So what can you do? What can you do? But yeah, big up.